Okay, I hope people can hear us. Yes, they should. Okie doke. Sweet. You ready? Um, Did everyone sign in? Who's here? If you haven't completed the sign-in form, now is the time to do it. There are some serious questions on there that we need you to answer, so please complete. We'll start in like two, three, maybe five, maybe like an hour. <laughs> But like, isn't Justin Ross bad? I don't. You should Google it. I'm sure women can say it's bad. You know, if I look it up, then Google's just gonna tell me I'm dying in three days. Yeah. <laughs> so. I think that's the way to call the elite. That's so scary though. I remember one time I looked up like I had like a cough and sniff, and I looked it up what could I have, and then it was like. <laughs> like, uh -oh. I definitely don't have a movie about it. I hope not. <laughs> How are you doing? Yeah. In the front. How are you doing? Good. How's your good service? Good. Good? Yeah. I should have done her. Mm. I feel that way about the business. <laughs> yeah. No. Nice. Uh, do you have a do you have more of a suite? I didn't even see it. That's very nice to it. 31? 32? 31. Are you smaller? I'm going to get mine in person. Uh oh. Yikes. Yeah. We added mine online. Dude, it's like, I don't know. I can really think it's really good. I can really think it's really good. I can really think it's really good. No, that's right. <laughs> Focus on those projects. Those projects yes. care. <laughs> oh, wait, which one? Three pointers. <laughs> All I remember is that uh, on the pointer project, <laughs> I messed up. Yeah, that's what tanked my life. Uh, <laughs> yeah, no, it's going fine. It's because I was like, what's the point? Mm -hmm. yeah. That's good. Yeah. I don't know. Oh. 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 Mm. And then I have a paper to write it. G? Yeah. Oh, like, yeah. oh okay. What class? That's good. Yes. Okay, you're gonna start. Yes. Okay. All right, guys. You gonna start now? All right, everybody, welcome back to Ops Lecture Two. You're going to be learning a lot of stuff today, so please pay attention. If you don't pay attention to any of the lectures. You know what, that's fine, but pay attention to this one, because this one will actually help you in many things, even if you're not like an engineering major, probably. If you take physics, it'll help you. <laughs> okay, so first a couple of reminders. Congratulations to everybody who completed Project 1. A round of applause for all of you. Um, there's not going to be a problem this week. Um, we're going to have a couple, I think like two weeks of no projects, but we're going to have a workshop next week, so keep an eye out for that. Um, also, Big question, are you in the Discord? You should definitely be in the Discord because we send out a lot of announcements. You can chat with us there. If you get a friend request from Mr. Jellybean or Reticulous, that is us. Don't be worried that like this random person is asking to be my friend on Discord. It's just us, we're not strangers, okay. Um, and yeah, if you don't have me on Discord or like you're not in the Ops channels, please like talk to me so I can become your friend and send you all like the links to get into the IEEE Discord and things like that. Okay. And then, of course, <laughs> I spent way too long making that multimedia in Canva, but you're going to have candy after the lecture today, so please stay for the whole time. Okay. All right. So we went over your guys' projects, obviously, to check you off. Some of the common questions that came up were up here. So some, what if, a lot of people kept asking, why is the LED still like when it's like 100 ohm resistors instead of like 60 ohm resistors you put the calculator? Um, and the reason for that is that the forward voltage uh, will still create that drop through the circuit. Um, however, your current changes as a result of that resistance. Remember, because the current uh, resistor limits current 
because there's a certain base current, that means that the current being supplied to the LED is going to be less, right? And because of that, it's going to be quick as a result. Um, and then also, another question that popped up is can you have negative voltage? Yes, we won't deal with that a lot in terms of negative voltage, but when you deal with a voltage drop, we'll kind of teach you, well, I should teach you how that I should have today more. Um, but we'll never use a negative voltage source in the scope of models. Uh, and then a note about why. There's a reason that we test things all the time. Well, you'll learn in later projects that we calibrate a lot of our stuff, but we also make sure to test our digital multimeters to make sure that they're uh, bring it to what they're actually supposed to be because data sheets lie uh, sometimes. Someone makes a typo, you know, a tired engineer doesn't want to write an LED data sheet, right? And he puts in a three instead of a two. Common mistake, right? And then all of a sudden, you have negative voltage going through that LED. And you're like, what? What's going on? So, for that reason, you just, that's a part of my life, and that's something that we just have to go with. So, we'll teach you how to use digital multimeters. Actually, the next week. Is it? Today. Today, yeah. <laughs> All right. So, when we begin with circuits, one of the most common things we use is transistors. Um, we're going to begin with low cost transforms of higher order differential equations. <laughs> um, we're going to understand the transistor operation inside of a amplifier. And we're also going to use the Laplace identity, uh, Laplace transport, sorry, to identify frequency variations and use them to use today. Okay. All right, so this is basically review for you guys for ops, right? This is the prereq. So, in terms of what we're going to go over, we're just going to skip over this slide. You guys should know this already. All right, so the actual lecture today <laughs> is understanding circuit schematics um, and, and using circuit schematics in the prereq. So, don't worry, we're not wrapping. <laughs> so, Laplace transforms are out of the scope of ops. Don't yeah, worry. <laughs> don't worry. You won't deal with that high or that just yet, actually. Yeah, maybe when you get to one or two. Actually, when you get to one or two, you know what? Mm. Or if you decide to drop in on a rap lecture, that's probably what I'll teach you. And you'll be like, what is this? Like, oh, here, that's a Laplace transform. I do know. No, this is an op uh, operational op amplifier. Wait, right? Yeah, yeah. 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 And this is transistor. Oh, that's just a graph. <laughs> okay, move on. All right, so what I'm going to cover for you guys today is understanding circuit schematics. All right, so these are different characteristics of circuits. What you may notice on the left one, <coughs> left one is that there's an open gap, right? Can everyone see that? All right, that means it's an open circuit. Because of that, it is incomplete and current can't flow throughout what we want it to be, right? Um, we also have a closed circuit, that's our normal circuit. We made a closed circuit in project one. So create a, uh, from the top of your battery to the bottom of your battery, positive to negative. And then we also have shorts in our circuit. That's something you wanted to avoid with that LED, right? That's why we added that resistor. Um, but it's bad because it makes things blow up, makes things catch on fire. Lots of bad things happen with electronics when it's under stress like that. And the reason for that is that because when a when you have a short circuit, right, it creates an ideal conditions. It means that the current is infinite. And because of infinite current, that means that all your electrons, right, are like zooming through that circuit as fast as possible. And what does that cause in a material, right? Like phase change and free breaking, right? So it start burning through wires. And um, in terms of like what usually happens is it will like can actually I've seen a few demonstrations of that before. I think my first ever LED circuit, that actually happened. <laughs> <laughs> and it was, it was crazy because my teacher back in the day, she was just like, oh yeah, just do this. And I was like, okay, so I did it. And then she was like, wait, you forgot the resistor. And it, like, it, the wires started like smoking. Like, it was crazy. I was like, no way. And we used an Apple battery. We used an Apple source. That's why it was that bad. Typically, you're free ready. You're not really dealing with that too much. Um, and then also, with open circuits, it's kind of the inverse of that. So remember Ohm's law uh, equals IR? With an open circuit, your resistance is infinite instead of the current. And because of that, think of like that water pipe example. You have like infinite current resistance, like infinite current lengths, right? Which means that nothing goes through. Those are two good ways I like to think about it. All right. 
So here are some common components that we use in circuits. These are like the typical schematic symbols on the, oh actually, do any of you want to try pointing out whichever one? So we'll, yeah. Um, okay. Just one first. Like, oh, just point out. Point okay. All right. I think you need to make sure. Do I? Okay. What's the, what's the one under? Can anyone put? The ground? Yep. Good job. What's the one after that? <coughs> Is this two? Yeah, good. Um, usually, you won't see the square one, but in like Eagle, uh, which we'll have in workshops three, but if you ever try out MicroMouse in the future, Eagle kind of uses this symbol too. Uh, what about that one? So the right top. You guys use it. Right. Okay. Alright, now what about the one in the middle? Switch, good, good. You guys are like five or six now. Mm -hmm. Okay, what's the last one? Capacitor, good job. Capacitor. Sweet. We are not learning about capacitors today, but we will, I think, next lecture. I think, maybe. All right, okay, so we want to identify characteristics and components of these circuits. First off, can someone tell me, only one person raise their hand, um, what are the three key Identifying components of example one. Meaning, like, what are the two components on the circuit and what is the circuit? It relates to the last thing today. So, it's a battery, or there's a, yeah, I think it's like a, like a, I guess it'd be like a battery and then a resistor and it's like a series circuit. That's correct. However, what, so you see that little gap? What do we call it? Oh, we have a one circuit. Good job. Okay. What about example two? Anyone? Any takers? Yeah. Uh, it's a short circuit with a battery and two resistors. No. Oh, that's example four. But yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right here, right? Wait. Yeah. No, this one is not short. Example two is. Oh, okay. It's not but it, yeah, but four is so. I'm just gonna say we did four. Yeah. <laughs> um, actually, something interesting about this example here is that the current will completely bypass that resistor because it's a short. So instead of going through the resistor because you know water flow always goes through the path of least resistance, same thing with current, it's gonna go through R1 and then all the way to ground of the battery. It's not gonna go through that device here at all, okay? Um, what about example three? Um, there's a, a battery and a resistor and there's an uh, resistor and one. Okay, okay. okay. Um, same situation there. It's, well, I mean, technically, one short, but it's like the same wire, so it's right. just right here. Um, it doesn't really matter, it's like just an extra wire, mm -hmm. I guess. And then for example two, um, this is a parallel circuit, so these two resistors are in parallel. We'll teach you about that today. And then, you know, battery source, and it's a complete circuit, so no worries about that. Yeah? For uh, example four, why is it so short if R1 um, so we consider it a short across R2, not a short circuit fully, but a short across R2 because it's not going through R2 at all. All the way through that, <laughs> that wire is We still call it a short though. Yeah, those are basically just examples of where the short isn't necessarily dangerous, but it might be like a bug in your circuit. For example, in example four, maybe you wanted it to go through R2, but you accidentally like connected a wire across it, then that would be like a bug that you might have to go through and um, figure out where it was. Example three is just kind of silly, but yeah. yeah, it's just, they're examples. All right, so different aspects of every circuit are going to be junctions and nodes, well, junctions and nodes, they're the same thing. Um, but there's a points on the circuit that have the same voltage uh, potential, and they're also um, in that point where we call, like let's say on your breadboard, for example, right? You know how those horizontal rows, how we call that a node, one singular node? Well, that's because they all share the same voltage potential at that point. Um, on the breadboard, that's because they share the same piece of metal. Uh, but in terms of circuitry, we, sorry, we uh, call that a node. And that's, we use node voltage analysis a lot when we're going to teach you KPL today. Um, there's many different methods to analyze a circuit. and and Sorry, NVA, and no voltage analysis. No voltage analysis and your KCLs, KBLs, which we're going to teach you. Um, 
are made in Western world. And then, sorry, um, it's also important to note that these junctions at these nodes, that the current is not the same. So voltage is the same, but current is not the same. Uh, because current, sorry, current going into the node is going to split into two. Think about it like you like put a, like a beam of light, right? You put a beam of light into a prism, and it splits into different aspects, right? Okay. Same thing happens here. You put a current into it, it's going to split over the two branches. However, because they're at the same point, at the same like, if you want to think about the water example, back to that, at the same tank of water, they're both going to have two different rivers, right? You have a lake, you have two rivers, they're going to have the same potential at the top, but the flow of the rivers is going to work. Okay. Okay, sweet. So, um, for this example, are the two pink dots on the same note? Someone tell me that. Someone who I haven't heard from. Yeah. Anyone out there? Yeah. No. Correct. And why? Can you tell me why? Because the voltage is also from the refractor. Correct. It's perfect, actually. Um, and then, what about example two? Are they the same? Yeah. You can answer again. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, why? Exactly. Okay, sweet. Yeah, so does everyone understand that? Or do we need to cover it? Yeah, good. Can I get a show of like thumbs up? Yeah. Okay, good. Thanks. Oh, is this you? Yes, it is. Okay, sweet. Okay, so now we're going to start looking at series and parallel resistors and also some KVL, KCL, and then we will get into multimeters in the other chapter. That's actually wrong, but anyway. Okay. So up until now, we basically mostly dealt with like maybe one resistor, maybe two resistors, but we haven't learned really how to calculate something with more than one resistor. Uh, so a fun fact is that if we have a really complex series of a bunch of resistors, um, even though it looks really scary, it's actually pretty cool that you can take this entire thing and simplify it into a single equivalent resistance. Um, and we use that with the, um, we use the relationships of resistors in series and parallel in order to do that. So you're going to learn about, you will actually end up kind of solving this. So that'll be pretty cool. But first, we're going to start with resistors in series. So resistors in series are going to have the same current, but they're going to have different voltage drops across them. And we usually, um, the symbol that we usually use is the plus sign because their resistances will add in series. So if we have R1, R2, all the way up until Rn series, then our R equivalent, or R series, is going to be R1 plus R2 plus all the way to Rn. <laughs> okay, so that's resistors in series. Resistors in parallel is a little bit weirder. So parallel, we have them oriented like this. So series was like when they were all on one line, and now it's kind of like they're all vertical lines next to each other, but they're being connected by wires on the sides. So each resistor is going to have the same voltage because their each end is on the same node, and we know that each node has the same voltage. So the voltage on the top is going to be the same. Is going to be the the difference between the voltage on the top and the bottom is going to be the same for all of the resistors. So that's why they have the same voltage drop across all of them. But they're also all going to have different currents. So we say that the reciprocal of the resistance um, is going to be the sum of the reciprocals, which sounds very confusing, but basically just looks like this. So you take the reciprocal of R1, R2, R3, all the way up until Rn, um, that would be, and then take the reciprocal of that sum. So two reciprocals. And we usually use the symbol of the two lines to say that they are in series. So you'd say that REQ equals R1 parallel with R2 parallel with blah, 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 up until Rn. Okay, any questions on series and parallel resistors? Okay. So now we are going to try doing a few examples. So it's probably best if you take your calculators out. You might not need them if you're like really good at math, but series can get kind of ugly. So we'll start with example one. What would the equivalent resistance be between points A and B? Um, and then you guys want like a quick math trick? Uh, this trick is pretty handy right here, so the same thing about the reciprocals. You can actually just take the product of the sum of this specifically less than two resistors. Yeah. So make sure you know that. 
Uh, but you don't have to memorize this, it's always this one. But you don't. But this one's pretty good. So Does anybody have an answer for example one? You should choose someone. Yeah. Nobody's raising their hand. I don't want to put someone on the spot. Yes, please. Uh, what's the I think that sounds right. Let's like calculate it out. Just <laughs> complicated with example two. So this time we have um, a third resistor. To give you a hint, R3 is in series with R2. Yes. Is it four? Let's find out. So we would have R10 in series with R2, so that's going to be 10 plus 2. 10 plus 2, that's 12. So we're going to have, this is basically the same as a 12 ohm resistor in parallel with the 6 ohm resistor. So, uh, LA. Example two, good. Okay, great. Example three gets slightly more complicated. Anybody know the answer off the top of their head? Yes. Yes, exactly. So basically, you might be noticing that this is just like building off the same circuit. So we have the same R equivalent over there. Oh, sorry, so we cut off. But um, so the R1, the R2, the R3, that whole thing is the same as a four ohm resistor. And that power resistor is going to be in series with the 8 ohm resistor. So you can just add those resistances, and you get REQ is 12 ohms. So, um, yeah, sure. And then, yeah? Um, sorry, this is about example 2. Can you calculate um, R1 and R2 first, and then add R2? So the um, resistor is in parallel before you add it. Do you, want to, do you want us to write it out for you like that to like, prove it to you? Do you want to just answer? I'll just answer it. Okay, no. Um, <laughs> and the reason for that is because R3 and R2, um, not, okay, so the end of R3, right, the left end of R3 and the right end of R2 are on the same node as R1, but R3, R2 and R1 are not, like, don't start the same, so to speak. So there's going to be a voltage drop across R3 before it reaches R2. Right, which means that they're not going to show the same voltage drop across, so therefore they're not parallel. So, like in a more generalized sense, you want to like calculate left to right, I guess. Like assuming your power is coming from like the left, and then do all those, and then do the ones in series. Well, okay, not every circuit that you encounter is going to look as simple and nice as these. Um, sometimes you deal with something that's like a lot more complex, like this. The weed stone bridge. We call yep. it the weed stone bridge. It's like something like this, right? It's like there. It looks it's really gross, right? Um, but the way we like to think about these is you always want to figure out what's in series and what's in parallel. And then if they're in series, that's the simple one. You just add them together, right? And then you combine those two. But that's the simplest way I do it. Um, it usually helps, like for me, what I usually do is I just like redraw the circuit. So like in this case, I would try and redraw it as like, so I see that R3 and R2 are all even connected to each other like this. So I can rearrange it as, I have my node up here, node down here. I 
And from here, I can really easily see that R3 and R2 are in series and um, in series with each other, but then in parallel with R1. So the other circuit that you first described, that would be like a fundamentally different circuit because it would have to look very different from this. And that's the reason why you couldn't like rearrange the way that you, um, the order in which you do things. You said to do the, you said why can't you do the parallel before the R3, right? Like you said why can't you do R1, R2 before R3? The circuit's gonna look something like what we're constructing right now uh, instead. And you'll notice that, you'll see that that's the same circuit, right? Um, and because of that, I mean, it kind of depends on your resistances, but like 99% sure you will not have the same equivalent resistance for those two. Yeah. Um, and then some fun tips for you guys. Let's say on that LED project, right, that you guys just did, that you actually wanted 50 ohms. Let's say you found yourself to be 50 ohms, but none of you have 50 ohm resistors in that kit, right? Okay, so someone actually told me in the project spec, I mean in the project, what is it called? Not spec. Check off? The check off. The check off that, you, that they did the parallel technique, right? So they put a 100 ohm resistor in parallel with 100 ohm resistor, and that gives you 50 ohms. You can do the math. But yeah, that gives you 50 ohms. Um, and in terms of that, that's how we can make like either greater resistances or less resistances. Let's say we wanted 60 ohms exactly, we just added 10 ohm resistor here. So 100, 110, that gives you 60 ohms. So with series and parallel combinations, you can kind of make any resistance you want. You know, it's all relative to the math that you want to do. And um, I mean, obviously, you're given what you're given with those things, and you may want a very specific resistance. Um, for other reasons other than the LED in particular. So it would be best to do something like this. Yeah. Makes sense? Any other questions? <laughs> yes, please. <laughs> for problem three? Yes. Yeah, yeah. So basically um, what we did is we went under the assumption that, so we already knew that example two was the same as a four ohm resistor. So we can see that example three basically has example two, but then eight ohms in series. So we can just simplify that as four plus eight, so that's 12 ohms in total. Is that okay? Anything else? Yes. In the fun fact one, does it matter that the two are still parallel to the six, even though they aren't like actually like parallel to each other in the diagram, right? Yes. Right. So why is that? Just because they come from the same code? Yeah. So yeah. yeah. That's another case where it's like, it's nicer if you redraw it and then you can see how they're in the parallel series. Yeah, typically, good practice that I've noticed with the use of redrawing circuits is to make it more like square. Yeah. You'll get a lot, you might get some triangles. Triangles don't look good, you know? Like, this makes your brain go, what, you know? But that, that's a little bit better, you know? And so one of the reasons we use the equivalent resistance rules is to make it that one singular resistor so that our brain can just comprehend that as the it is, you know? So yeah, redraw it. Easiest way to do it, right? You redraw it, then you identify what's in series, what's parallel, what you can simplify the easiest first, and then you do all your stuff. Okay. Okay, I think we're good on resistors now. So we're going to get started on Kirchhoff's laws. So Kirchhoff has two really cool <coughs> laws. The first one is loop rule, and that refers to voltages. So we say that the sum of the voltage drops around a loop in a circuit is going to have to equal zero. And the way that it says it here is we have these three mis three Rs, but basically VAB, that's that R on the left side, plus VBC, plus VCB, plus VBA, they must all equal to zero. And that is always true. I'm going to close them. Junction rule um, is going to be talking about currents. So currents entering a node must equal the amount of currents leaving the node. So kind of like the example that Eli said with the spectrum. So like when you have a single beam of light going into the prism or whatever, and it shoots out all the different beams of light, but really all those beams of light that are shooting out, they would add up to make the beam of light coming in. So it's like the same idea. So I2 plus I1 plus I2 plus I3, those are all coming in. Um, plus negative I4 plus negative I5 equals zero. Is that good? In okay. terms of like what we're talking about in the scope of ops, we always do with ideals until we like do DMS. So for now, we can like ignore internal resistance. <coughs> okay. Uh, we, we might ask that question just later. So for now, like 
everything in the world has resistance. You have resistance, right? We all suffer from darkness. Um, resistors, I mean, sorry, this is like wires. Wires also have resistance. Nothing's ideal, okay? But if you're going to consider that minuscule now, because we don't even want to deal with the point one ohms of resistance, the wires can be okay? Okay. So those are Kirchhoff's laws. All right, so one thing that I like to do when I first learn or talk about Kirchhoff's laws is to prove that, uh, prove the resistance rules that we just saw using Kirchhoff. So in this case, we have a voltage source and three resistors in series. We're gonna use this to prove that resistance adds in series. So you say that V1, that's our source, minus VR1, minus VR2, minus VR3 equals zero. That one comes straight from Kirchhoff's laws. Um, I rearranged it so that V1 is on one side and all of the resistor voltages on the other side. And then I substituted um, I REQ for V1. So I would be like the total current that is coming out of that battery and REQ is the equivalent resistance um, of those three resistors. That's going to be the same as IR1 plus IR2 plus IR3. If you recall, resistors in series are all going to have the same currents. So that means that all these currents are the same and we can just kind of cancel them out and we end up with REQ equals R1 plus R2 plus R3, which is pretty cool. Any questions? Concerns? Hopes? Dreams? Dreams. Yeah. All right. Hopes and dreams. Yeah, it's like, what, like, most of yours first year in college, and hopes and We crushed their souls wow. with the Laplace transforms. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so now we're going to be looking at junction rule and proving that, uh, the reciprocal of REQ is the sum of the reciprocals of the resistors in parallel. So um, this case, we're going to say that I total coming out of our source is the same as the sum of all the I's that are going through our resistors. And again, using Ohm's, Ohm's law, we can turn those I's into V's over R's. So we have V over REQ equals V over R1 plus V over R2 plus V over R3. And we know that, again, resistors in parallel are all going to have the same voltages. So we can cross out all those voltages, and we get that 1 over REQ is the sum of all of those um, reciprocals of all the resistances. So yeah, hope that kind of drilled it in. All right, so now we got some exercises. We have 1, find the current drawn from the battery, then find the voltage drop across R3. It's, it comes out to a round number. That's my only defense. Just so you know, project two will be a little lost track. As God intended. Wait, you want us to draw it up in my test? Um, sure. That's really good to hear for it. KBL and KCL are going to be the parts. It all comes down to it. Those help the rows. All right, you here, like, and you see the three yet? Yeah. Okay, you'll probably fail this year. Griggs. Griggs is a whole, he loves no voltage analysis. So, you're like, you're good. KBL for a little bit. But everything in no voltage analysis is all the He'll teach you that. This case is going to be on the case. Yeah. I have a question. Oh, sweet. Yeah. Um, what is the last one I can't do? Just tell me. What was it? So it's a two-parter. <laughs> All right. Someone come up and do it. If you don't, raise your hand and choose it when you're ready. <laughs> <laughs> right. he, he asked this, so like... Oh, oh, you? Okay, okay, come up here. Good shot. Mm -hmm. All right. I think the next one has to be a small 
Feel free to explain yourself at the top. Okay, so I guess I first start with my right arm. Right? And then fold the pieces across the board. Fold uh, 22.5 away. Don't worry, it's it's two two millions. His twenty two point five is half of twenty five. Oh, okay. So you're just with two millions. You got it. Sweet. Yeah. Amps. Okay. Amps. Then, oh yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right. Then how do you calculate the uh, the voltage across our field? Okay. Use the same equation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So in this case, we know that for resistors in series, they're all going to have the same current. So the I that you just calculated, that's coming out of our battery, right? Yeah. And that I is just going to go right around yeah. back here. So if we're looking for the voltage drop across R3, we oh, just use V equals IR, right? Okay. Do any of you have any questions about why current in a circuit or in series components is the same for 15 volt resistors? Okay. 15? Exactly. 15 volts. Because sometimes. Very nice. Thank you. So this process makes sense to everybody, how we use the um, our equivalent to find the current draw and then use Ohm's law to find the voltage draw. That'll be good. Okay. And also, just very briefly, so we can bring it back to um, Kirchhoff's laws, we can see that the voltage in, voltages in this loop are all going to add to zero. Um, so we usually take the voltages across resistors to be negative. So we're going to say uh, that this is the same as 35 volts minus um, 5k times 2 amps. That's going to be 10. 10k times 2. Yes. yes, 20 minus 15 volts across our 3 equals to 0. Luckily, this does add to 45 volts, so we get 0 to 0. So this law does apply here. Okay, great. So now we're just going to try example two, finding the values of I1, I2, and I3, and then the voltage drop across the 5 ohm resistor. So it's slightly more complicated, unfortunately. Was that CS31? Yeah. Oh, uh, I'm sorry. Do you guys have a lot of classes that like the two minutes from thing going on? Yeah. yeah. So, that's a UCLA thing. I've never done that. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> right, because it's two minutes. Oh, Great. All yours. Okay, 
So Brands. That's no, <laughs> unfortunately, I'm sorry. Oh, I mean, so it goes through. So you can find items in that, right? Right. So we just say that's a good question. That is I one. Okay. It's weird. It's like water and like circuits and electrons. <laughs> Don't put water on your circuit. You know? <laughs> Who lives on the bill here? Probably everybody. Who has a P meal plan? Oh. oh. <laughs> oh. Wow, guys. So I'm, I'm here in like. Dinner on you. What am I <laughs> You're finding the multi right? across the fiber, right? Okay. Does anyone actually have like all these words and stuff? Does anyone have any questions? Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I should. You should be able to just take this no. and then um, subtract that from your board yeah. to find. Yeah, so like, um, what did you find for the part for I1? I2 and I3. That's oh, right, I2 and I3. Right. And then you have like. Technically, no, but. Wait. But then you don't have a note. Oh, I, I'm supposed to stop asking. <laughs> it's okay. Yeah. Honestly, you've got enough. So it's similar. But I think, so, yeah. I think this is. For it to be an open circuit, no Yeah, I think so. Um, so, but that one there's a zero on the open circuit, just that I matter. Yeah, it's not as parallel. Oh, it's two. I like to talk about it. One, it's gonna come three, here. two. That's gonna see there's nowhere to go, right? Mm -hmm. so, then it's just gonna go to the four. Okay, I'll just take this. Yeah. Whenever there's an open circuit, that's the new switch. Yeah, because we can like. And that means they're going to drop across five. So we got four volts. Four. Three. One. That's what I honestly don't want to do. I think it's supposed to be done with the calculator, so. Does this make sense, though, how I got this? Yeah. Yeah, because the voltage drop across here is like the same. So, yeah. So then all the voltages are Okay. 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 <laughs> okay, guys, I'm sorry, this is not satisfying because um, the numbers are really ugly, but... You made them ugly? I didn't, I just copy pasted. <laughs> but it's supposed to be like, whatever 4 volts minus 64 or 31 is, hopefully somebody can do that and then it should be well, right. It's like more than two, right? Def like Probably. Approximately two. Approximately two. You'll learn. Approximately is Is there anybody who is like confused and like wouldn't even know where to start on solving example number two? Okay, yeah, yeah no worries. We will, um, okay, so basically the strategy that we used for this one is that we first found the equivalent resistance of these, this three and five in parallel. And we found out that that was 15 over 8 ohms. So then we put that in series with the 2 ohm resistor. You can find the equivalent resistance of the 2 ohm and the 15 over 8 ohm. And then you can get, you know, your one single resistor. Then you can find the I1, the current being drawn from the battery from that, just using E equals IR. So we have um, our R equivalent, so it would be 4 volts over the R equivalent. 
that gets you I1. And from that, we can find the voltage drop across the two-ohm resistor, because I1 is the current length of the two-ohm resistor. So we can get um, V equals IR, so I times I1 times two ohms. That would get you this one right here. That would be 64 over 31. And then our last step that we did to find the voltage drop across the 5 ohm, we didn't find I2 and I3, I'm sorry. But <laughs> to find the voltage drop across the 5 ohm resistor, what we did is we, because um, we know the voltage drop across the 2 ohm resistor, and we know that these two are in parallel, so they must have the same voltage across them. So we did 4 volts, that's the source voltage, minus the voltage drop across the 2 ohm resistor, and that got us the voltage drop across the 5 ohm resistor, which is also the same as the voltage drop across the 3 ohm resistor. So if we think about it again with um, the voltage laws, um, we would find that like because these two are the same, you know, the voltage drop across three is the same as the voltage drop across five, so that would like equal zero, right? You can subtract them. Um, and then ideally, all the voltages across here would equal zero, which actually does make sense because we found this by subtracting um, this one from four. So if we were to add them all together, then it would also equal zero. Makes sense. Oh, good. Okay. Do you have hopes and dreams now? No. I think I've crushed them even further. <laughs> All right. It's 64 for 31. It's like less bad than what you'll see later. <laughs> okay. So now we will lift our spirits with a kahoot. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So actually, both you're all in this because the office is going to pay for one of the extra money hats if you win. Other places be handy, but it's not about to happen. And this isn't a trick. Wait, if I continue as a guest, is it still going to work? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> you, know, I should close you, you should. You should. What did I do? You just put your name. I don't know. <laughs> oh, I don't know. How do I? Language, language. Bob music. <gasps> Wait. Okay, here you go. What? Aw, oh, man, I don't want to leave the site. It's okay, you don't have to have the game. Make your full screen. Oh, okay. <laughs> As we should. Wait, are we streaming this? Yeah. Well, not streaming. No. Recording. <laughs> Maybe I should stop the recording. <laughs> That's okay. Wait, do you know how many questions there are? Ten? Okay. Are they easy? <laughs> okay. We'll find out. Okay, so like, yes, you'll be able to, if you've been paying attention, like, you might have Yeah. If you haven't been paying attention, no. You guys ready? Okay, we're gonna start it at 7:20 exactly. Yeah. Calculator is probably a good idea too. Oh, use your phone. <laughs> I think I chose good numbers. I think it's like one. One is good. <laughs> good. I don't remember. I made this up the stars. So we'll, we'll see now. Okay. All right. I will hit start. Three, two, one, start. Okay. So the first question is watch the zero. What symbol does this represent? <laughs> oh, there are two. Yes, it is a resistor. Great job, everybody. You've been paying attention. <laughs> All right, next question. What symbol does this represent? <gasps> oh, 
All right, it is a battery. Congratulations, everybody. Is that a resistor? Wait, wait, wait. What? Is that a troll? <laughs> <laughs> what is the name of this type of circuit? Very nice. It is in parallel, <laughs> not series, unfortunately. Do you understand why it's not series? If you guys have a question about that, talk to us. <laughs> All right, Swag Jasmine still in first place. Very good. What is the total resistance of the circuit? Right, there are two answers that are correct. <laughs> There's the shortcut. So the, the one in red is the shortcut that Eli showed, and the one in yellow is like the normal one that you would use. Yeah. They are equivalent. They're equivalent to each other. You can work it out yourself. After that, she worked it out. Oh, I'm so sorry, Jasmine. <laughs> Edward is now on top. All right. What is the total current? Oh, <laughs> All right. So, remember that V is equal to IR, right? You guys remember that? So, V is equal to IR, so what does I equal? V over R. V over R, right? Okay. That little trick isn't, here it's being multiplied by, right? Instead of being divided. Do you see that? Okay, it's the next time. Just read it. <laughs> this is why they no longer have hopes and dreams. <laughs> All right, Daniel now is in the lead. True or false? Is the circuit closed? <laughs> Very good. It is false. It is not closed. It is open. You'll learn throughout the year that I, I'm like, I'm kind of mean sometimes with just like jokes and stuff. So, like, if you get a troll, just accept your thing. There's nothing you can do to stop it. I mean, you know, a lot of you thought you were in offs. Just like, <laughs> <laughs> <So>. <laughs> Devastating. But that's how it's not me. It's, it's me. <laughs> Don't worry, she's really nice. Oh, yeah, sorry. Yeah, I made them close. <laughs> I forgot. So, so I knew. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> All right. At least the majority of people chose the right answer. Does everybody know how you would do this one, like without the time limit? I know, like the time limit makes you nervous. Is this all good with everybody? Approximately. All right, Daniel, still holding on. Oh, Double points! What is the voltage drop across part one? It applies to the last question, guys. Come on, come on. Come on, you just got good at it, right? Oh. Oh. Let's go! It is 3.4 volts. So you would just do the 0 0.17 times 20, so that's 3.4. <laughs> We're making you fight for this bucket hat. 
Oh. All right. How long will they keep their lead? We'll, we'll find out. True or false? The circuit has five notes. This game really shows who your notes are. Truly. It is. I'm thinking about it. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> oh, false. All right. Does everybody understand this one? Do you want to like point out the nodes? Yeah. No. Okay. All right. Continuing. All right. <laughs> How many junctions does the circuit have? Oh, just the same one. <laughs> All right. <laughs> the number of junctions is the same as the number of nodes, so yeah. Does everybody understand this one? I see we had a lot of people chose three. Oh yeah, yeah. I'll show the media. Oh, what's the arrow thing? That's a current source. You don't have to know what that is. Well, the point is just like it's another component. So to point out all of the junctions, again, junctions are the same as nodes. So this would be one node over here where all of like the wires are connected, this little like F kind of. And then we have a T here, that's another node. The backwards F, that's another node. And finally, this like three pronged thing, that is another node, also a junction, same thing. <laughs> all right, next. Oh my gosh. Daniel is making his comeback. We're rooting for you. All right. How many nodes does the circuit have? I literally did just tell the answer. Very nice. It is four. Great job, everybody. All right. Only two more left. <laughs> Double <Four>. points! <laughs> Which note is a reference note? What? <laughs> Wait. Is this allowed? <laughs> 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 Alright, All right, guys. Show the video. Show the video. Okay. Show the video. Okay, guys. Alright, so. Blame him! <laughs> so, number four. <laughs> okay, so a reference node is what we call a node that's attached to the ground. Alright? So here you see the little ground symbol. That's like a reference node, okay? Because one, two, three are already labeled. Four is just the end of the Okay, guys. Uh, you know, stop talking about this fair. <laughs> so true. So many life lessons here in Oz. <laughs> you will get treats at the end of the lecture, but first, tricks. Final question, true or false? Double points! Yeah, this one's going to us. <laughs> All right, who, who the four, the four? <laughs> I don't know how to tell. <laughs> Maybe we can check afterwards. All right, but first, I think podium. All right, who is getting the bucket hat? Drum roll, Sydney. Sydney, you're going to call Kevin, Adrian. Last but not least. Um, no, I have several left actually. <laughs> Thank you for competing, everybody, even though it was slightly unfair, but 
At least it was fairly unfair for everybody. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna try and get through this really quick because I know everybody's hungry and it's like already been an hour. So um, I'm going to briefly touch on how you use digital multimeters. There are some resources linked in these slides if you want to know more about how to do this, but this is just so that you have like a resource or something if you ever come into the lab and you want to use a multimeter to help you work on a project. So first it's going to be measuring, um, actually no, first we're going to talk about what is a digital multimeter. So a digital multimeter is basically just a nice really cool electrical instru instrument that can help you measure a bunch of different properties of circuits that you're going to be working on. So there's a voltmeter, there's an ohm meter, there's an ammeter, and there's a whole lot more too. Um, but those are basically the main ones that we're going to be focusing on. Um, so this is really good for debugging and also for safety. Um, for example, if we had a short circuit, we'd want to know if there's a short circuit in our circuit before we attach a battery to it. Otherwise, the battery would blow up, right? So we can use a digital multimeter to um, see if there's a short circuit in our circuit. Yeah. So the black um, port right here is going to be your ground, and your red is going to be your positive. So there's an ammeter that is for measuring current, and then everything else is going to be in that other one. It is important which one you use which I think I will touch on later. Okay, so measuring resistance and voltage, pretty easy. You just put um, the brown lead, or sorry, the black lead on one end, and then the red lead on the other end, and you, you do have to make sure to turn the dial to the right one, but once you get to one that has like a little ohm symbol on it, then you should be good. Um, same thing for voltages, um, you just wanna take it to the V, and then that will get you to the little meter option. Um, this is the question here is, why does the voltage here appear negative? Yes, please. Uh, you put the uh, red end on the wrong side, the black on the wrong side. Right, so batteries are polar, right? There's a positive and a negative end. So in this case, we have the black end on the positive end, the red end on the negative end, and that's why it's reading a negative voltage here. So signs do matter. All right, measuring current. So we can also measure current um, by using the ammeter, and that's when you would want to switch to the other uh, red port. Um, the reason why this is important, because when measuring current, if you do it incorrectly, then you could form a short circuit within the multimeter, and you want to make sure to protect your multimeter in like the case that you accidentally do something like that. Um, so in this case, um, we just say measure current is tricky, so you know, before you do it, just ask us for help and we can help you. But if you want to know more about that, oh yeah. Um, in terms of thematic current, you want to make sure that you calculate generally what your current's going to be first, so that you know the rating that you're going to use. And then when you're dealing with current, always go up and down. Never start the middle yet. We go up to amps, right? That's how it breaks. I've seen it done a lot. I mean, I'm a PC stockroom supervisor. Um, down in engineering four, and I've had to open up a lot of the DMMs and fix the pieces because they're top because we were just, you know, they like test something that's at like five amps or milliamps and you know, it's very sensitive, so it freaks out. Internally, the digital multimeter is its own circuit, so you can short it out and that is bad because it causes damage. So just be careful if you're measuring current. Everything else you're probably fine. Okay, finally, measuring continuity. So this is the case where I said um, we can help determine if there are short circuits within our circuits before we plug them in. Um, so continuity basically states if the probe is on the same node as the other probe, then it will make this really loud beeping noise. Um, so if you ever hear like a super loud beeping noise in the lab, it's probably just the digital multimeter, not something breaking. Um, so in this case, if it was on the top one, then it would the digital multimeter would not respond, and if it was on the bottom one, because we have that short between the R2 and the R3, then it would be beeping really loud. Okay, and, and that's it, great. I went through really quick. So uh, make sure to come out to workshops one if you are interested in coming to our workshop. You're going to be um, learning some debugging tips for circuits that will help you a lot on project two. And thank you, that is all we have for our lecture. Thank you for coming. Oh, yeah. Also, we have snacks. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.